thank you guys so much for being here. Um, this has been such a strange and unprecedented time. Um, and everyone has been kind of sacrificing so much in terms of sacrificing their livelihood, in terms of um, making sure that for the sake, for the sake of public safety. Um, but I think that we can pull through to the other side um, because we are, something that's great about our community uh, is that we can always come together, even virtually. Um, we can come together and we're resilient, we're strong, we have a great ability to work together um, and overcome kind of the greatest adversity. Um, so, I'm so glad that everyone is here. Um, for this meeting, um, we hope to get out, I guess, four things. Um, the first one is to understand um, where the greatest needs are um, for artists, spaces, gig workers, bartenders, um, people in the cultural sector. Um, then, like, what kind of ideas people have addressing those excellent. Um, hey, Julia. Hey, Ali. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and then, oh, one more. If you if you're not if uh, if you're not talking, then go ahead and mute yourself. Um, oh, we got Mr. Abraham's. Great. Okay. Um, so and then so we've got what are the greatest needs? What are people's ideas? Um, what's the priority? Um, how do we achieve the relief uh, that we prioritize? And then we're also looking for volunteers. Just really um, actually mute everybody else. Um, Julia, it's really quick. You can mute everybody else. It's really hard to hear you because there's a lot of background noise coming from somewhere. You can, as the host, you can mute everyone else except yourself. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure where to. Let me see if I can find it. You go to participants, and then in the bottom on the bottom there are a few buttons and there should be mute all. Awesome. Thanks. Welcome to this. We can also mute ourselves. Oh wait, so tell me tell me what Okay. Okay. Thanks for the tech support everyone. Okay. Um okay so um since we are very clearly a large group, which is awesome, um, I'm going to ask that people um, don't respond directly, um, but use the chat feature, which it seems like people are doing, which is awesome. Um, so if you have questions or comments to what somebody says, go ahead and add it to the chat. Um, so how this is gonna work is that um, we've got a few people that I wanna tap to kind of talk about what's going on right now, um, and then, I, we really want to hear from folks about um, what's going on for them or ideas they have for solutions. Um, so I think um, if at any time that you want to speak, um, we'll add you to the stack and we'll add you to the stack by you adding your name to the chat. Um, so on the right hand side, you can just put in Julia Fredenberg um, and we can call on you. Um, and each person will have three minutes. Hello. Um, some of us are on phone and can't see the chat. Oh, okay. Um, so you can, I'll just put my phone. You can text, if you have the ability to write down my phone number, you can text in and I'll add you to the chat if you're calling in by phone. My number is area code 816-728-8685. That's 816-728-8685. Send me a text and I'll copy whatever you send into the chat. Okay. Everyone. Thanks. Okay, great. Thanks for letting us know. Um, okay, so, um, so, okay, great. So if you want to speak, add your name to the chat or text Jamie at 816-728-8685 with your name. We'll add you to the chat um, and you can speak for three minutes. Um, we've got health experts. Um, artists, gig workers, policy experts to talk about um, what they've been seeing um, on the ground and ways to address different issues. Um, and the meeting will be exactly one hour. Um, and so we'll do three minutes for each person until 
uh, the one hour is up. And so there'll be more that we'll want to, we'll need to work through, but let's keep this meeting concise. Let me make sure I can bring up the chat. Okay, great. Um, oh, okay. You can also tell people star nine will raise their hands in Zoom. Oh, great. Okay. Someone's like a real pro here. Okay. Well, let's do it in the chat just so yeah. that we can keep it in order. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, oh, and there was a question about, will someone be taking notes that will be made public? Um, Dan, yes. There's Dan Kieser, our artist coalition member, is taking notes. If you can share, Dan, if you can share your Google Doc in the chat, then other people can help uh, you maintain those notes. Okay, great. You this got meeting, it. This Thank meeting, you, Dan. This meeting, uh, just so you know, this is uh, public. So if you have anything that is sensitive that you need to say, let's follow up with that um, in a direct channel. Um, That's good. Um, okay, and I think, okay, so I guess we'll talk about the priorities. Um, so um, Olympia has been, Olympia and others um, have been working feverishly um, to talk to as many people as they can, to understand the issues, um, in order to create what kind of priorities um, can we send to elected officials or develop among ourselves in terms of um, what are the biggest priorities. Because the city and the state are forming their relief effort and we should have a voice in what that is. Um, and some of you may have seen those on the Facebook event where there's a Facebook poll. Um, and then I'll just, I'll just link that too. Um, so you can have that easily at hand there. Um, okay, so I just kind of before we dive in, um, I'm going to just go over uh, briefly, so we're on the same page about what those priorities um, were that came that were part of this initiative that Olympia spearheaded um, and where they are in terms of our priorities so far. So um, the first, maybe I should put this in the chat. Hey, what do we do? Go along? I'll, I'll, I'll just go over it briefly, Olympia, and then you can say, um, I'll call on you and you can talk about where things are at with the letter to elected officials. So the first one is rent break and mortgage payment moratorium for housing and commercial spaces. So that would mean that you don't pay, you don't have to pay rent on your commercial or your residential, your apartment um, for an emergency period of time. Um, and that includes mortgages as well. Um, the second most popular one so far is free COVID-19 testing for all. Um, everyone deserves, everyone should be tested. Um, the third is in treatment. Right. So that's, we'll, we'll get to, I'm going to go in the order that um, people prioritize them so far on the um, Facebook poll. Um, so the third one is uh, to expand unemployment benefits and access to um, and, and expand unemployment benefits for all workers. Um, so not just if you're on a salary, but for all workers. Um, then the fourth one is free treatment of all COVID-19 cases. Um, so everyone should get free treatment um, if they've experienced, if they have the virus. Um, the, fourth, the fifth one is emergency unemployment benefits for independent contractors. So not just if you're in a salary position, but even if you're an independent contractor, you should get unemployment benefits. Um, the sixth one is universal rent stabilization, um, which would limit rent increases for commercial and residential spaces. And there were some things that were added onto the poll um, as the um, as people had new ideas. So just um, the seventh one is to waive all government fines, um, like property property tax, sales tax. Um, for the 99% of folks in New York City. Um, the eighth priority one is uh, uh, NYC urgent grants for small venues closed by emergency order. Um, and then expanding New York City small business grants um, so that gig workers and small businesses that have less than 10 employees have access to these grants. 
Um, and then another one, oh, a new one that was added was um, a bailout for pension plans and 401ks affected by the stock market. Um, another new idea has been grassroots New York City um, artist relief fund. And then another great idea is um, to let incarcerated individuals out of prison. Um, so those have been the priorities that um, and ideas that we've gotten so far, um, either on Facebook or through this excellent work that Olympia has been working on. Um, should we also talk? Let's just go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We've got. Um, oh, okay. So um, we've got a few folks lined up to speak, um, and the first person is. Oh, okay, we've got some comments here in the chat. The first person um, will be uh, Marissa Abrahams, who is a um, registered nurse. Um, Marissa, are you able to speak? Hello. Yeah. Where are you? Hi. Is We're that, trying to find you. Is everyone able to see Marissa when she speaks? Somebody... <laughs> No, Sorry, I don't use Zoom. Can we hear Marissa? There she is. Oh, okay. Can we click on her? All right. Hi. There she is. Okay, great. Hello. Hi. Thank you, Marissa, for being here. Sure. Happy to be here. Um, so I maybe you should give just a little, like, you know, your name and um, what you do. Sure, so I'm, my name is Marissa Abrahams and I am a psychiatric nurse practitioner. I work for the State Office of Mental Health in a series of clinics in Brooklyn. So primarily working with people with severe persistent mental illness in the community setting, but with all kinds of needs. Okay, excellent. And so I guess I wonder for um, artists and musicians and space operators, um, and probably anyone, um, what we should be doing in terms of um, health response, like what should we be doing in our practice? Yeah, I mean, the best thing any individual or group can do right now is, as everyone is probably well aware, to try and stay home, to try and keep distance, to be checking in electronically whenever possible. I mean, this is the, it's a kind of a crucial time, definitely in New York City and around the country to try and slow the rate of infections if we have any ability to do that. Um, some estimates are that probably, you know, there are probably about 10 times more cases right now than we know of. And that is due to many different kinds of problems, but also, I mean, one of which being that our country has not tested as much as other countries have. And there are many reasons for that. And there are many problems at different levels of government. And unfortunately, that's just where we are. So we right now need to be basically implementing like universal precautions, assuming that, you know, you could very well be a carrier and you do not want to transmit an infection to someone else. Okay. Um, I guess ba kind of based on that, what do you, what do you think that we should be calling for kind of as a voice um, in the community, like, like as spaces or individuals, like what do you think that we should be calling for? To the city and the state. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think that ideas like, um, you know, Assistance for payment of rent, assistance for payment of mortgages, helping people who are not able to stop working because they are healthcare workers and childcare is a start, but there are you know, many other supports that people are going to be needing. I think uh, income support, yeah, and unemployment, because people need to be able to not work now if it's possible. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, I don't know that getting, I mean, right now there are not, the testing capacity is not where it needs to be. I do know that the state and city are working to open more 
um, more testing sites and hopefully we'll be seeing that more common and widespread in the coming weeks. But I think the priority needs to be on however we can support people to be able to distance themselves. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Marissa. Was she experiencing? Oh. Sure. Um, what, so, what are you, I guess, what are you experiencing at your job? What's the day to day of this? Yeah. Um, so, like I said, I work for a state psychiatric hospital's community services. So, we, I mean, it's a different situation than working in a hospital, certainly, and we have some ability to be able to start to do. We're trying to start to impl implement like telepsychiatry and some facilities are doing that already with more success. Um, but, you know, we run up against a lot of challenges working with this population. So, you know, there's this idea to try and implement telepsychiatry as soon as possible. But meanwhile, many people we're working with don't have video capacity or, you know, don't have minutes on their phone. You know, these are challenges that come up. So, it's it's very day by day we're getting changes like hourly as to what the recommendations are and it's um yeah it's just it's just very everything is quickly changing right right and just a reminder uh people can be asking questions in the comments to our experts as they come in oh yeah uh we got one in by tech can healthcare and hospital communities use any helpful art signages or what messages would be uh helpful so Meme. Oh, interesting. Artie signages. Um, you can follow up in the chat with that also if you need to think about it. Yeah, I'll think about it. I mean, we have signs. Basically, signs need to be very clear. Um, and what we're doing now in the guidance for most community um, health settings that are not hospitals is that we are able to do like a phone triage prior to patients coming into the clinic. So basically we're calling everyone before they come in, you know, just to go over like their risk level and determine if they had any symptoms at all, obviously ask them not to come in if that's the case. And kind of, you know, a little more informally, we are, you know, making some recommendations. I mean, depending on the acuity of somebody's need for people who are higher risk for illness due to age or medical comorbidities or immunocompromised, um, to really try and do what we can to help them to stay at home if it's possible to provide the services that they need over the phone. Mm -hmm. so Excellent. Mar and Marissa, maybe you can follow along. If anyone has any medical questions, maybe maybe you may be able to point them to answers in the chat. Sure. Great. Thank you. Okay, thanks so much, Marissa. No problem. Um, okay, let's see. I think the next up is, um, mute the crowd again. You can go ahead and go. Okay. Um, so the next person that um, I hope to talk with is Deanna Mora. Hopefully she is here. Here. She's here. Okay, great. Hopefully we didn't just mute you. Can you unmute yourself, Deanna? Yes, I did there it. There she is. Oh. All right. Hi, kids. Hi. Hello. Okay. So, um, um, uh introduce yourself and maybe you could talk about um what you're experiencing at your space and then if there's other stuff that you're working on that you want to share that would be great great so i'm diana more i own friends and lovers uh so a few things have changed since uh the city is forcing us to close you should all check any venue owners should check your uh, insurance policy we do have a business interruption uh, coverage that uh, it's case by case. Everyone has a different policy, of course, but if it, it doesn't usually cover viruses or bacteria, but it will cover government shutdowns. So hopefully what that means is you'll start getting some money to help cover some payroll and some other expenses. Uh, the other part is if anyone's gotten sick and you can map it back to your business, then the workers comp will come will also cover that as well. And then I think uh, I'm just trying to figure out how to get everyone paid. So I unfortunately went the route of laying off my staff 
uh, so that they can collect unemployment immediately. And then um, right now I'm trying to figure out if we can, um, if I can raise some money for any of the people, any of my staff that does not qualify for an unemployment. So I've been able to place some of my 1099s uh, with some side projects. So I've got them kind of busy uh, for the next few weeks so that they have some money coming in. And then um, just kind of, I come from a marketing and music marketing background and branding background. So uh, yes, between yesterday and today, I quickly draft a proposal to find a, a nonprofit partner who will then be the administrator of a fund. And the goal is to start an outreach program where I go to all these liquor sponsors who, you know, I made Hennessy a ton of money this year. Jack Daniels made a lot of money off of our businesses. Like, why not give me a little bit of that back? So uh, starting to get them to donate to this fund, and from that fund, we can start allocating to little to independent businesses. That's all I have. So this is something that maybe that you're looking for people to help you work on this fund. Um, so, so I yeah, I, sorry, I did uh, just to back up. I did send a draft around. I think the next. Um, Point would be once we secure a nonprofit partner because uh, you know we can't become a nonprofit we just need to kind of filter the money through someone else have them help administer it talking to a nonprofit that specializes in independent um, musicians um, they seem to be interested so uh, once we once we get alignment with them then the, the next step would be how do I activate a team who could proactively send out these emails to anyone uh, any contacts that they may have who may have deep pockets who would be willing to donate. The reason we're going through a nonprofit is because we want to give them the opportunity to write it off so they're more willing to then donate bigger monies. Outstanding. Okay, so should we go to so, or to? So if, if anybody want, uh, you know, so if anybody wants to connect with you on that, let's connect in the chat. Fantastic, thank you. Yeah, and so just to, I guess, give a little recap, Deanna's working on um, a fund um, for spaces. Um, okay, great. Um, there's a lot of great chat here. Okay, um, maybe let us go. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so um, let's talk with Elizabeth Adams. And she is um, she is an excellent staff member for Council Member Stephen Levin, and an awesome lady herself. She works for the New York City Council. Yes, I'm sorry, New York City Council. Um, and um, I guess introduce yourself, uh, even though I already did. And um, I guess if there are, um, if you have any updates. And then if we're able to, I guess we might have a few questions about specific priorities that people seem to have. And this is an opportunity for members to ask University Council questions directly. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us, Elizabeth Adams. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, so thank you all for first uh, to you two for hosting this. I think this is so, so important. Um, I can uh, share a little bit about kind of what's going on in the city where we are now. Um, and uh, and then really, I'm, I'm glad to be here to hear from all of you of what's most important for artists, freelancers, folks in, in New York City um, uh, who do this work in a lot of different ways. I think, uh, as Jamie said, um, for it's the time is now for city and state officials to really hear from people kind of what priorities need to happen um and so it's great for for people in government to be hearing of okay this is what we need to push on at the city level this is what we are not going to settle for when it comes to things at the state level um so uh, it's great to be doing this together uh in terms of where we are with coronavirus. Uh, I just, I want to underscore a lot of what Marissa said. Um, this is really an unprecedented thing that we're all living through and uh, we've never experienced something like this in our lifetime. Uh, and I, I really think that this is, there's going to be uh, a major shift that comes out of this. Um, I don't mean to say that to be uh, alarming, but it really is you know the, the the data that we're that is coming out of um, 
and public health experts, from all from data scientists, from epidemiologists. Um, it really is all tracking the same way um, that requires us to take action, very strong action right now, um, because if we don't, um, our hospitals are going to be overrun, particularly, um, and we're not going to have the the ability to care for the number of people who uh, are impacted at once. So, you know, I, I think it, it, it can be a little bit hard to wrap our minds around right now, um, especially, you know, it's a beautiful day outside and, and, and it seems like, you know, we're all doing okay. Uh, really kind of where, when this is going to hit us is probably in a couple of weeks is when um, all of, all of the, um, the spreading that's happening now um, is kind of when a, a lot of it will come to a head. Uh, so maybe, you know, a, a week or two. Uh, the total number of confirmed cases we have in New York City is 463 as of today, um, with total fatalities of seven. Um, uh, and so really, I, I, you know, we should all be listening to the public health experts. If you're, you know, if you want to follow New York City Health Department on Twitter, on all the social mediums, that's really a great way. There is a, a text line that the city is sending out updates. Uh, the two major updates that happened last night uh, are the fact that schools are closing in New York City, today, today being the first day, um, and there will be certain sites open up next week uh, as school enrichment centers for, um, for families where the parents are, you know, emergency responders, work in hospitals, uh, work in, in settings that we need to make sure that people can get to work if they're transit workers, um, or uh, if the family lives in shelter, wanting to make sure that those young people can still have a place to, 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 to be during the day. Um, so those will open up next week. And then the other big uh, change that I think is, is, has really you know, come as a, a hard hit and a shock to a lot of us is uh, closing of, of bars and restaurants, which everyone on this phone call is, is very familiar with, um, with the exception of the, the takeout option. Um, you know, I, I've worked in a lot of bars and restaurants and, and nightlife in New York City, and I, 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 it is not, <laughs> this is like, this is a, a really hard thing, and this is going to be a really hard thing for a while. Um, a lot of people who work in nightlife are paycheck to paycheck or, you know, I've been in a lot of situations where I didn't have money in my account. I knew I could make $200 when I went to work. And so the, I think the, the impact is, is uh, going to be really, really hard. Um, but again, because this is such a um, kind of an unprecedented thing that we're facing. It's, you know, we, 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 we don't really have an option. Um, and that I think then takes it back to our elected officials, our city, state and federal uh, leaders or, you know, electeds to, um, to show up and to respond in, uh, in the way that is fully needed. So I, I think the uh, all, all, honestly, all of the lists, all of the items in the list that you all have put together are things that we need to be talking about and pushing for. I, I think the rent break and uh, the mortgage payment moratorium is really, really important. I think it's, it, personally, I feel like it's for our, our state to, 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 to say that, you know, all of these people are out of work, 800,000 just in restaurants and bars alone. And then, you know, all of the other parents that are gonna need to stay home with their kids who have other places of employment, that is on a scale that we have not experienced. And so I, I, I think it is absolutely what we should be doing is, is calling for um, a rent moratorium. I think on the elected official side, on the, you know, uh, I, would, I would say people are still thinking about what those proposals and plans look like, but I wanna say that for here now that we wanna, um, from the council member's office that I work for, um, really kind of lean on, on all of you for uh, what, how, what we should be doing and, and how we can push for that. Um, and then just on the free testing for all, there has been, um, as Marissa said, there's been a lot of challenges in getting the testing that we need. Um, we, we are kind of in the, the, the place of really needing to focus on social distancing and containment um, for now. And so that is something that we can each do on our own lives. We can be doing, you know, in, in our day to day, as well as um, our, our, our city and state taking that on too. Um, 
uh, but more testing would be great uh, because it allows us to keep track of, of clusters as they're happening. Uh, I think it's, you know, it would be good to, to, to put pressure on thinking about how we, we get more of that testing, really innovative approaches, honestly, because it's not coming down from federal. Um, so I think that that's a conversation to have at the state level and this, the city level to continue to have. Um, so I think that's that's really valuable. And then the expansion of unemployment benefits. Absolutely. I, I mean, a, a good friend of mine just today said she went to apply for unemployment because she's out of work as of today and doesn't qualify. And I think there are many, many people on this call even um, that are in that same boat. So um, definitely, you know, would uh, think that 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 is um, a strong a strong call to make um, so I'll pause there if that and then um, yeah I think so I, I just had um, a few quick questions but um, in terms of the um, in terms of the rent break um, what would need should we who should we be lobbying to is that a state issue is that a city issue um, how would that how could we make that happen? Great question. Okay, and I'm also just looking at some of the, the comments um, in here. Uh, so the that's that's a state issue, um, and I, I, I should have clarified before, I think as folks have, have noted here, we're supposed to the, um, the residential side and the commercial side. Uh, the residential side is state, um, and that is something to, to have that conversation at the state level. The commercial rent side, um, I um, I think that that's uh, I, 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 we, I think that's worth pushing honestly at both the state and the city <laughs> to, to see how the, those conversations go um, and and yes it's it's important uh, for for rent kind of across the board both on commercial and and residential um, and then yes so and then just to respond here, also someone asked, uh, does the city have the ability to freeze rent or is it more feasible that we get a stimulus? Great question. Um, I think, that, so the, these are some of the, the, the questions that we're gonna need, really need to be exploring in the, the coming week um, and, and more. I, you know, I, I, I do just wanna give an appreciation and shout out to the power of advocacy in moments like this uh, with the evictions, um, the, the court proceedings continuing last week around uh, uh, housing evictions. Um, we saw, you know, by people pushing at the end of the at the end of the week, Rebneys came out with that we're not going to do this anymore, and then the state came out with something, and I forget exactly how that looked, but I think we we saw it responded to in a couple different ways, and that that I think is 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 the importance of putting out the issue and saying folks need to figure out a a, um, a response and and an answer, uh, and it could be a couple ways that we. Have make it work again this is we, this is not something we've done before but um i i, I do just want to um uh acknowledge that and then so yeah so the saying the reason um i asked that is we should push for advance should we push for advanced stimulus right now and yeah so so here's the other important thing um i think because the federal government has declared this a national emergency um that the the main thing that we get out of that is uh, is is emergency funding um like after ha like what ha after happened after sandy um there there's money that comes to the state from that and that that really is the big thing that we get uh, and then the state is also right now uh finalizing their budget so and and there is a, 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 cro a coronavirus package being worked on um at the state level too so i think we will see um a, a lot of funding packages coming out from this uh, again, and so this is the time to put out priorities of of saying this is what we need to see funding. Mm -hmm. So um, expanding unemployment benefits for everyone, something like that. That is something that's done through the Office of of Labor, um, and so I think putting that out as a strong priority uh, is 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 how that that piece would 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 be included or or addressed. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth. I wonder if you're able, We, I think we're, uh, this has been super helpful. I wonder if you are able to go and answer, there seems to be a lot of questions in the chat. I wonder if we can move it over there. Um, and then I actually just wanted to answer one question that I see in the chat from Deanna. Is a rent freeze um, for, um, like how would a rent freeze work? And I, and I believe it would be um, that you're not paying throughout that time. Um, so to avoid um, going into debt. Yes. 
Okay. Yeah, and, I, think that, I think that's kind of what we're thinking is, is it would be a, you are not paying rent. Right. right. And uh, so, you know, that all night, you know, through this meeting, we're going to hear a lot of important voices. And so, you know, that we'll also deliver the, the, the outcome of this that, you know, that we'll, we're going to continue to be in communication with the city. Um, so we appreciate your time very much, Elizabeth Adams. Um, and we'll con our work here is to condense this so that we can continue this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, okay, great. So um, we've just got, we're just doing great here. Okay. Um, so um, Olympia, along with a group of others, have been working to um, draft a letter um, to elected officials, um, highlighting what are the priorities, what are we hearing from folks, um, and I hope that um, we've got a few minutes, and if Olympia, you could introduce yourself and talk about kind of the effects of the letter, success, you know, uh, this sort of thing. Don't worry. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So I'm Olympia Kazi. For those of you who don't know me, I am one of the main organizers about policy advocacy with the New York City Artists Coalition. I think I know all 100 people participating right now. <laughs> and thank you all for joining me in all those official meetings and uh, hustling around. So we've been working actually on coronavirus for weeks already because a lot of our members are uh, musicians that have lost already their gigs, they were cancelled, they, they had to tour, they had international stuff. So this uh, has been going on for a while. I personally, because I have family in Europe, I knew this was coming. So we've been doing a lot of research and the six points that we put in the letter, by the way, uh, I don't participate on Facebook. So the things that, uh, uh, that Julia were talking about, even though that's my, the letter I literally drafted and sent, I didn't know. So I can tell you the six things that I know and that we did send to the elected officials. And first of all, it is free treatment and free testing because we know many people don't have coverage, they may don't have, um, you may have health insurance, but still don't have coverage. And this is really unethical at this time for people to be bankrupting by medical, you know, expenses at this point or not to be able to get access to care. So this was the most important thing we asked for. Then we talked, of course, about expansion of unemployment benefits to independent contractors. So if you are employed and you have a W-2, one way or another, you may have access eventually to these benefits. What is unprecedented in history is for independent contractors to have this kind of benefits. And this is going to be very important because all gig workers, unless we do this radical decision, they're not going to have any uh, uh, benefits. So the great news I have about that is already Linda Rosenthal has asked for it at the Senate. So there is already some traction. The letter we sent today, it went to the governor, it went to the senator, Sumer, for the federal issues, and it went to our mayor. So the third thing we asked for is about a rent break. Yes, as they said, the whole idea is none of us should be accumulating debt because if and ever, I mean, hopefully we'll all come out from this tunnel, we don't want people, already there will be too many things to cope with, you don't want any debt for anybody. So the, the fourth thing we ask for, and it's all the expenses, you know, uh, rent break for residential and commercial. We also ask for postponement of all sorts of payments that are non-essential right now, you shouldn't be taking, paying your sales tax right now, you shouldn't be paying property taxes right now, what you need to be paying and you know the landlords if we don't pay rent they shouldn't have to pay their mortgages they shouldn't have to pay anything what is important is that people receive a salary they can feed their kids they can take care of the sense of things that they need to be taking care of right now so the other thing we asked we asked for is we heard from many of you the there are some loans without any interest given from the small business services for businesses up to 100 people but again, a loan means eventually you need to pay for it. So what we looked at is that another program that the Small Business Services has that is for grants. So something you don't need to pay back. But these are right now only for businesses up to five employees. So we ask them that we expand them to businesses up to 10 employees because many small businesses have more than five employees. And we also ask them to streamline the request 
for this kind of grants so that you don't have to jump too many hoops to access this money. Uh, the other thing that we ask that is very important is we want the city to give these grants also to independent contractors. You may be working as an LLC or something like that, but basically we, we want the city to give grants to independent contractors that are right now uh, have no income. The other thing we asked for, it's only six points, but it feels long, is that uh, the Department of Cultural Affairs and the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment, they should establish emergency grants, especially for uh, venues that we've been working on that have live performance. By the way, in our letter, we're asking only, we, we use only the word music, but I've been talking with a lot of other kinds of performance and all live performance is suffering right now. So when we post this thing online, I think we should just make it sure that we're asking for all live performance because all these people have already canceled everything and they're not gonna be able to make ends meet for a while. And we asked also that these offices consider giving drugs to, uh, grants to help people having more access online and being able to stream things because we're all gonna be closed in our little houses for a while. Even this chat, we are already at capacity. We're already 100 people. Other people wanna join us and they cannot. So we need funds so that we can have 200 people, 300 people participating here. So these are the things that we asked so far in this letter. I must say that I have been in constant contact with the Office of Nightlife and for sure we have the Deputy Director and maybe the Executive Director with us in this 100 people and I would like Julia to ask for Jose or Ariel to talk at a certain point. I already shared in the chat a survey that they just put out. They're asking you if you are gig workers, the kind of uh, um, uh, events that have been cancelled, how much money you're losing. They want to be able to estimate what is happening so that they can create programs to help us. And so I already sent a link, we're going to be posting it later online. And please, as many of you as you can, uh, fill it in and share it with your friends and collaborators because it's important that the city understands the people are suffering and how much money they're losing and they cannot meet, you know, um, the, the, the things that they need to pay. Uh, the other person who's on the phone, as Julia said, I've been working with a group of independent musicians and DJs that uh, have been already in existence since June as a committee of the New York City Artists Coalition. Any of you who is in the call who is a musician or a DJ who wants to join, they should email, you know, contact the New York City Artists Coalition or me, Olympia, at and um, we've been working on a lot of issues. Maybe we will have another meeting where we talk to you more in detail about that. But right now, later, the other person who's on the call who has been very active and working with all of us is Mark Rebo. And he has some ideas about if we do establish a fund, he's been already in contact with established organizations like Jazz Foundation, etc., who have a history of helping um, artists in distress, whether you need, you know, surgery, healthcare, or all, all sorts of, you know, dark things that some of us will be facing in this tragic moment. Uh, there are places out there that can really help people, and we've already been in touch with them about how they could help our people. So if you want to call on Jose and Mark uh, at some point, Julia, it's very important. Thank you all, and we're going to come through this. Thank you, Olympia. So so, so excellent. Um, okay, I think now would be a good time um, if we could hear from, I guess you were saying um, Jose or Ariel from the Office of Nightlife are on the call, on the video. And while we're bringing them in, uh, you know, that this uh, chat is at its maximum capacity. So that's 100 people right now. So you all are making a big difference by being here. Do we have Jose? I'm texting him. All right, we'll, we'll get Jose on as soon as we got him. Okay. Um, and if he needs to call in, then, uh, then he can, Olympia, give him my phone number and I'll pipe him through right out of my phone. Yes, one thing I forgot to say, the other person who is just texting me and he's promoting our letter and it's very important is Marty Cummings, who serves with me on the Nightlife Advisory Board where I'm the vice chair. Marty is an amazing performer and, uh, so, you know, he's also someone who can help a lot of us. So if you need anything, reach out to me. I can put you in touch, et cetera. 
Excellent. Okay, let's see. So we're we'll come back to Jose, but I think right now let's um, let's hear from Rick. Hey all, my name is Rick. Uh, I run a uh, company called Ad Hoc Presents, based in Brooklyn. We put together a lot of events for the city, um, a little over a thousand a year. Um, I'm looking to gauge interest in the community on forming uh, a fund that is specifically for venues and independent organizers based in New York City. Um, we're seeking a nonprofit partner to help administer um, funds and advise on how funds should be paid out to everybody who participates. And we're also putting out a call for people who would like to um, participate in the, in the fundraiser as well. Um, I made my email, my name in here, and I'm um, posting it in the group chat um, right now as well. But uh, I think it's really important that we make sure that the organizers and independent venues of the city uh, band together and centralize their fundraising efforts and their relief efforts under one single campaign for a few reasons. Um, but I think one of them is to really show our visibility and support uh, in numbers. Um, I think there have been a lot of people that have launched independent campaigns, uh, which is excellent, an excellent move. But um, I think it becomes more meaningful when, when things are kind of um, under a single effort. Um, so please get in touch with me if you feel that you could help and love to you know, open it up to the community. Outstanding, Rick. Um, and because we've got a number of people who are interested in that, um, and so I think that I'm, we're just going to drop a Google Doc link very shortly, and, and people can just put their contact information in there, and we, we form a group around that under mm -hmm. what you're doing. Because it seems like there's a lot of folks, um, at least in the chat, who are like, yes, let's do a fund, uh, or I'm already working on a fund. Um, Andrew Adams had texted in and said that uh, if you're looking for a nonprofit, the Musicians Union and ASCAP are both nonprofits. So let's let's follow up. We're going to drop a Google Doc link and we'll we'll coalesce that and support your effort however we can. Excellent. Thank you so much. Appreciate the time. Um, okay, great. Let's see. Okay, we're on a roll. Do we have Jose or oh. Ariel Palant yet? Oh yeah. If so, unmute yourself. Otherwise, is Lauren Gardner here? Yeah, or what's he actually, there was one, there was one um, person would like to comment. So, um, oh, Mark would like to comment on the fun question, yes. Can you unmute yourself? Hi, um, Mark Rebo, I'm a musician and I've been active with the Musicians and DJs Committee. And one idea that's been, that we've been kicking around is the fact that, um, there have been a lot of proposals for relief funds, people doing GoFundMe and trying to directly raise things. And, you know, needless to say, the, this has the advantage of if there's a small community, people know each other. But it has a distinct disadvantage, which is that, you know, when you raise however much you raise and you put it online that you're giving away money, a lot of people will write in. You'll have to hi hire an administrator. There are costs to administering. And so rather than um, multiplying administrative costs without really increasing the, the pool of, of potential donors, we had the idea of creating a, I don't know if, if this is gonna happen, um, but we had the idea of creating a single fund, finding one of the, of the existing relief organizations um, I, I recommended Jazz Foundation just, um, you know, just, but of course we'd be open to any other. The Jazz Foundation does a lot of music beyond jazz. They call, they, they have, their mission is also roots music, which in my experience means just about anything. Um, in addition to jazz and blues, they've, um, and the advantage of doing something like that, I spoke with them at the Jazz Foundation, what they said is that we could create a, uh, an earmarked fund within the Jazz Foundation, whereas if people from this organization contribute, if we direct donors 
to that fund instead of 10 different, you know, fundraising efforts on GoFundMe. If we, if we direct donors to that fund, they would earmark it for people we refer, okay? So for people from this specific community that we are referring, the advantage of going with an established organization like that is that once you're in the system, you also, first of all, their administration is already set up and they're very efficient. Second of all, once you're in their system, um, you also get the advantage, they have free doctors, they have a medical team that has done, and I mean, they do really substantial things. It's not just, oh, here's three, here's $500, now go pay your 20,000 medical uh, in medical costs. They have doctors um, who do major surgery and other things like that. They have social workers, they have already, they are experts at interfacing with city, state, and federal funds. So anyways, that's what I, that's what I wanted to suggest. If there's interest in that, this in the group, uh, please get back to me. And Mark, it could be beyond musicians? Yes. It, 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 well, it, no, it can't. Unf I, I'm checking the, um, I hope, I believe it's DJs. I'm checking their uh, criteria right now. I've a asked them for deta detailed criteria, but if not them, there's another, like, of the five major groups that are around who could who could do this you know music cares a bunch of others we'll find the other one i just want to urge people to think of putting something together and not duplicating efforts yeah exactly Amen. thank you thank you mark thank you mark um and then and there's a, a link to a doc about the um fundraising efforts and hopefully people can um Say hello in there. Um, I think now we have um, Aria Pallets from the Office of Nightlife. We were so full, I think it was hard to get in. Or Jose? Yes. Okay, great. Oh, sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I was muted. Um, yes, thank you so much for uh, arranging this. And I did try to get in, and it was too full. Uh, so thank you to, uh, I have Jose and Kevin from my office, and I think Francesca who have also been listening from the beginning. So mm -hmm. I'm, um, Night I'm here. Mayor. What? Oh, could you, in could you introduce yourself really quick? It's the nightmare. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, of course. My name is Arielle Pallet. I'm the senior executive director for the mayor's office of nightlife in New York City. And I have my certain staff members, Jose, Kevin, and Francesca, I believe, are also on the line. And uh, we are really, you know, we were established two years ago, as many of you probably know, um, really for the first time to make sure that nightlife is represented um, and has a seat at the table in the, uh, in the administration. And uh, it's been, uh, uh, I think, a very uh, great exercise, productive. Um, we've been doing a lot of great work not only uh, working to support the owners, but the workers, uh, the artists, the patrons, and the residents. Um, and no, none of us could have ever foreseen how important the creation of this office was um, for a moment like this. But I can tell you that, um, Number one, I'm very grateful to be in this position, to be able to be a messenger um, for all of the needs and concerns and fears that are coming up right now, um, and to be able to make sure that it is getting into uh, the right hands and into the right places, and that as things begin to trickle down, that you can also count on us to make sure that it's getting to you. I wonder, I'm available for questions. Oh, great. I wonder um, if, um, if maybe you could talk about any initiatives that, that you guys are working on right now. I mean, we were working on a lot of initiatives that have come to a complete and total halt. All right, um, related, to, related to COVID-19, sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, well, right now, you know, these are the early days of, um, this pandemic and we are using our uh, position to be able to um, 
really gather the information that everyone has and is looking to get and to uh, relay that again we're sending daily memos and having conversations with the deputy mayors and everybody in the administration i would say one of the biggest initiatives we had was to get nightlife shut down that was like took like the primary focus at first because there was a lot of misunderstanding and confusion and fear about putting the onus of stopping the pandemic on the bar on the backs of bar bags and patrons and so you know i i feel good about the fact that we were able to elevate the message and the urgency from nightlife to the mayor and i think within a few hours of us doing so he um he announced that it would be shutting down mm -hmm. and so now that we're in this place we're focusing on um continuing to focus on containment and on recovery efforts and i know there's a lot of questions about what are the resources but they haven't really materialized yet so the most important thing we can do is to be here to listen to everyone and to get your contacts and get your concerns and ideas make sure that it's getting heard and that we're advocating and fighting and pushing for for everyone's rights that's really where we're at in these early stages things are going we're we've created a survey that we're sending out we'll be doing digital town halls similar to this as well um, we're making sure all of the information that is being distributed you know on multiple platforms multiple agencies public and private that we're collecting it and being an umbrella of resource for everyone and also I, i'm here to hear from you what you need from us more importantly right now in these early days right i think um so we i think you know and and in conversation with you all but um it seems like that right now the prior from what everything that i'm hearing today and previously and um the biggest priority is a rent break um and mortgage payment moratorium for housing and commercial spaces i don't know if you're able to speak to maybe um i guess where your office stands on that or if how you see we could push that forward uh, i guess if you could speak to um, a rent break essentially for commercial and residential spaces well you know i just want to really emphasize what our office um does and our position is really as a liaison a central point of contact really between the industry and community and the city right so what we are able to do and i can tell you for certain is that this administration and all the agencies and not just locally but even state and federally are looking to this office to hear what is the nightlife industry and community saying and needing right so my greatest power first of all yes of course i think every break imaginable imaginable um, should be implemented whatever people are saying is what they need is what we're going to be sharing and we're going to be making sure that it's heard by the people that are making those decisions so that they understand the urgency um, and we are compiling that information in a way that is translated so that they understand, right? We could have gone days longer with nightlife still being open and the moral and financial risks that everyone was taking, but we were listened to. And I feel very good about the fact that we are still being listened to and will be continued to be listened to. But what we're saying is what you're saying we are the voice of nightlife and we are conveying what you want to the people that can make those decisions um and just really quick to give context a question in the chat is why was it important to close nightlife down and a lot of uh what we had heard talking with people who operated spaces like we heard from deanna earlier in the call that for instance that mm -hmm. uh, for instance that your insurance wouldn't kick in if you closed down uh, on your own volition rather than if it was order from the city um, and there so having that status of the emergency declaration and kind of being an emergency order um, you know that I think there are a lot of space operators who are waiting for that to occur 
because they weren't mm -hmm. sure if that if they closed before the city asked for it, um, if when benefits come, if they would not be included if they closed on their own volition. Um, and so I think that's I mean that was definitely part of it. That was definitely part of it. Um, again, this is multi layers of uh, responsibility and liability that we're talking about here, right? For personal health, the health of your workers and patrons, and you know, even if you're adhering to this 50 per 50 percent capacity rule, how is it possible to create social distancing in a, in a social space, right? It almost seems like you know, it was a good idea on paper, but in reality, it was extremely hard to be able to control people, especially people that didn't understand the severity and gravity of it, right? And so you're putting your staff, your, your patrons and everyone at risk, and that was a huge moral weight and responsibility on people. And then of course, there was also the laws regarding insurance and not wanting to shut down on your own and wanting to insurance, uh, to trigger insurance. and and it, it was a dominoes of reasons why it was important to do so. But, you know, there was also the perspective that, you know, we didn't want to, not me, I'm just saying the perspective that I observed was that there was an effort not to shut down everything so that economy could flow, so that people could make money. The intention was good you know, to keep things flowing. But the reality of what this is and all of its implications made that impossible. And so we had to expedite that decision as fast as possible. Because I was hearing, you know, a lot of fear and right. confusion. And that shut that down. Shutting down nightlife shut down the fear and confusion and now is allowing all of us to focus on containment personal health and how we can recover these are very the very earliest days of a very long haul and making sure we are documenting all of these collective needs um and ideas so that they are communicated efficiently and directly i think is the priority right now right um and i think like just to reiterate what our what it seems like our priorities going forward are um at this point where of course this um rent break and mortgage mortgage payment moratorium for housing and commercial spaces um right. free covid 19 testing for all um expanded unemployment benefits um mm -hmm. so all workers can access them um mm -hmm. Free treatment, of course, for COVID-19 cases um, and emergency unemployment benefits um, for independent contractors. Mm -hmm. And then our last yeah. one um, would be universal rent stabilization um, so that there is a rent increase freeze for um, commercial as, rel as residential. Um, and those are just those are kind of been our the priorities that we've been hearing and um, have been developing. Uh, even today, as, as you guys know. Can I ask some questions? Yeah, sure. Okay, so <laughs> Who are you? I, 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 didn't, I didn't know if this was something that was open to everyone, <laughs> so. Ideally, um, we're working is we put our- I Ideally got, not, that's gonna be a lot of questions. <laughs> ideally, yeah, go ahead. we put our name in the chat. My name's Kenny, my name's Kenny Rods. I'm a nightlife photographer. Uh, I make uh, I make my living in nightlife photography. That's all I do. Um, a bunch of questions. Um, in terms of like someone like myself who is on payrolls on a payroll at certain places uh, and is 10.99 throughout the rest of the year or throughout the, all my other jobs. Um, how would someone like myself be able to file for unemployment? That's one question. Uh, number two, um, someone like myself whose images get used to promote all, all the businesses that I shoot for use my images to promote their business, right? Those, bi mm -hmm. those businesses are now closed. Um, mm -hmm. Those images will still be used, right? So that's my work out there in the world being used. Fine how does that how does that come back to me in terms of everyone's using my work yet i'm not working 
right? Uh, um, how do you apply for unemployment if you're a 1099 em employee? You can't, right? My understanding. Um, my work's just being used willy-nilly by everybody, right? So, like, how, how does that... How does that work for someone like me who's a photographer or DJs who had, mm -hmm. like for me, for example, all of, all of March into mid-April was booked and all those jobs are gone. So I, I'm okay. saying that anyone like myself, it, it include, uh, photographers and including DJs, all those jobs are gone. How do we go about, I mean, I, I, the question is that, what I don't I don't I don't even know what to ask at this point. Kenny, I hear you. Kenny, I hear you. Um, first of all, they're gone for now. Okay, it's not a gone forever, God willing situation. I think the better way. Like, I'll get to your more specific question in a minute, but like, this is about how can we get through this storm. Yeah, yeah, together. Right. Oh, let me, can, right. I, can no. I just, can I just I fine think, tune it? Because yeah. I think, I, I think it was, a, I think it was a bit too broad. So uh, break it down into the sense of like for everyone here, we're all going to need internet access, right? So we all have our internet bills. Um, if they, you know, oh, your internet bills do. Okay. Your phone bill is due. Okay, your rent statement is due. Okay, how do we, you know, how how does that work? How are we gonna as a as a as a community figure this out? Because we all need the internet. We all need uh, all the services that we that we use now to communicate. You know what I mean? So how like that's just the question I'm asking generally. Like, how do we come together as a crew as a family and figure out how we can you know talk to a t-mobile or a verizon or all these companies and say hey we okay. we don't have the yeah. income to pay okay. for the services kenny, that we let me jump in kenny. kenny let me jump in okay um i hear what you're saying and first and foremost there is um you know, this is exactly what the aid package that is going through Congress right now, this week, um, needs to address, right? So okay. we have access to those who are writing and developing the aid package um, that we all need to advocate for that, for this, for these type of things to be included in an aid package, right? So this is what, when, when you're saying, what can we do? What we're doing is we're on calls like this, we're getting information, we're hearing what you need, and we are conveying that so that it can be reflected in the packages that are being developed. You know, at yeah. the same time, you could check with the New York State Department of Labor, but it is unlikely that you would be qualified for unemployment insurance. And what this sort of crisis is affording us the ability to do is to see the gap and to see where the weaknesses and the holes are, right? And that, in a sense, this burning that is happening, right, is really showing the vulnerabilities so that we have an opportunity to rebuild in a way that people are less vulnerable, right? And artists and everyone. And the uh, mayor said today, the yeah. mayor said today that um, unemployment insurance isn't enough and that we need income replacement. Those words, came out of the mayor's voice. We've all, we're also in touch with the freelancers union and assessing with them how, you know, what are the resources there? There's great, the whole, this is not even something like a Hurricane Sandy or something where it's a local problem. This is a global issue. And what you guys are communicating is what the world is communicating and what this industry is communicating worldwide, right? So this cannot be ignored. What this is has to be an opportunity to make things that have been unfair in the past right so we can move forward rebuilding this. This is a burning down to the ground. 
right? And so what that is is an opportunity for us to rebuild it right. And that's why we have to get, we need to get the directives from you on exactly how to do that so we can communicate it. And I think, Ariel, that is, um, I think that that's very important feedback. I think that um, I think that that's a really important question also from Kenny about um, how do we basically expand unemployment? Um, and I think that there's a few comments here in the chat about um, saying how you can how um, the different ways you can apply for unemployment. Um, so check out that check out the chat. Um, mm -hmm. It seems like a lot of people are in this 1099 situation. Um, right. I so think, yeah, we're, happy to take, we're happy to take the, we're happy to take this and try like right now on the fly I don't have all the answers but what we're here to do is to get these questions get to the people that have better direction and answers and if there are gaps on how to fill them and then Ariel, come back to the group. Ariel, this is Olympia. One thing that would be great if you guys can try to establish in the next week or this week also is hours. So if you could have once a week, twice a week, an hour where you have a chat like that, that people can contact the Office of Nightlife and bring up these issues directly to you, that would be really helpful. You know, hours with the Nightlife Mayor or whatever. <laughs> And right, I, that's a good name. I like that. We we <laughs> we are right now. Thank you, or <laughs> or in with the nightlife mayor is actually more more accurate right now. But we are per, we are currently um, developing our own uh, town hall type uh, digital forum, and um, you know even just participating and observing the ones that are happening to be able to make sure that. We are strategizing on the best way to do it, and that is absolutely part of the strategy moving forward. We will be hosting those. Um, okay, great. That's a great suggestion, Olympia. Um, okay, we're, we're running out of time, so we've got one more. Um, I think we've got one more question um, from Rhiannon. And I just want to emphasize that please sign up for the email list um, at, at uh, and we'll put it in the chat because this is this you know we're not going to unfortunately we're not going to solve everything right in this call but we but, but we'll stay with this conversation um thank you yes. so much um i just want to first of all and i'll make this quick but first of all i want to thank you all for everything that you're doing right now and ariel you're amazing and obviously the city needs you and the artist coalition now it feels like we've all been training for this for years and uh yeah so my my quick question and kind of suggestion at the same time is just i i would really love to work with you and uh julia and jamie and anybody else especially people maybe that have some background in um in pr and craft a message email that we can send out far and wide to all of our contacts in New York, mainly, you know, primarily, uh, maybe beyond, but just talking, yes, yeah, specifically about where we're at right now and helping to assuage the fears of everyone, you know, including Kenny and, and everyone that's, that's concerned and wants to know what's going to be done before the point that we get to where there's going to be more clarity about what sort, you know, resources are available, what aid is, is available. Um, and allow people, you know, to understand that they can get involved in this conversation, how they can help, mm -hmm. you know, there are obviously there's so much that has to be done before there's more clarity around everything, but maybe just kind of, I, I'd love to send an update out to the people that, that I know, you know, people that may want to help and people that just are wondering what they're going to do just to give them an immediate sense of the fact that people are on this collectively and mm -hmm. working as quickly as they can to to get more aid and more answers um so i'm wondering if we could you know have a small committee that works together on on kind of some messaging about that that we could send out and direct people back to your office and to the artist coalition and um does that make sense i mean yes you know, I think there's a lot of, 
right now it is all about reassurance and banding together. The scariest part of all of this is the unknown and feeling alone, right? And not knowing what to do about it. So these forums coming together, banding together, um, and figuring this out together is the most important thing. And making sure that we are taking this crisis and turning it into the opportunity that it is. Um, and I think if we do this right, it, we will come out better on the other side for it. And this is the test for us to see what community really means and what nightlife community can do. And um, I think the messaging is important, of re, important, of reinsur, uh, important for reassurance right now and to fill the unknown with actionable items because it's the helplessness that's going to make everyone live in fear. So we, everyone should be assured in the nightlife community that they are not alone. We have the Office of Nightlife, we have the Artists Coalition, and there are so many hospitality coalitions and groups banding together, and we will band all of those coalitions together too. And we will, one way or the other, not go hungry, not go homeless, and we will figure out a way to have something to return to when this passes. We have to remember, God willing, this is just a storm. We will get through the other side. That was so beautifully said. Thank you so much. And I, I think that's a really good start to the messaging right there. We quote you on a whole bunch of that. Um, and yeah, I just love to work with you guys to send something out, you know, that can go out really soon, like within the next day or two days max. I mean, tweet away, Instagram things. away, no. the, the social media is instant, right? And the Office of Nightlife, along with all these organizations, are banding together. We are representing you, right? So get us your information in, in, in these consolidated, um, you know, also we have people taking notes here also. So we, we have the information, we're creating the memos, we're getting the information out, but we're also trying to figure out how we can help people now, right? Or at least connect them to the resources to help them now as best as we can. You know, Thanks. so it's, it's, all, it's all unfolding and just a little, just believe, breathe, um, and, you know, let's just continue to lock arms. And that's, that's, that's really, thank you, Ariel Pallets and Rhiannon. Thank um, you. And everybody, you know, that we've had, we've had, I think, you know, we, we were at the capacity here, there were 100 people, and we were just rolling through. So th there's a lot of people, you know, remembering that you are the New York City Artists Coalition, um, that, you know, in times of crisis, we come together and we find a voice. Um, and we repealed the cabaret law together all across the city. Uh, you know, that mm -hmm. part of the advocacy that created the Office of Nightlife, so we can have this voice, this direct line to the mayor that's speaking out for nightlife spaces. We need to stay in contact with that. Um, and we uh, got oversight on the March raids that were happening. Um, and mm -hmm. now we need to, uh, again, we're facing the storm, like, like Ariel Pallet said, but, you know, that by staying organized, by staying in touch with the New York City Artists Coalition, people like Olympia, that we are able to uh, channel that voice into excellent writing um, that can translate our experience into the language of the halls of power. Um, and we can make a change and we can ma make a future for culture in New York City. So thank you for all of you for your time tonight. Um, and, uh, you know, you can sign up for our email list. Um, and we're going to keep this uh, chat open so that we can, because if we close it, it'll, it'll close it out. But, you know, there will be more conversations to come, but this is just a brief one. There's so much more. There's so much uh, mm -hmm. the big lift, um, but this is a start. So thank you all for your time tonight. Thank you for having me. Thank you, guys. Thank Bye. you so much.